So JavaScript was again recently listed as the most in-demand programming language in the world. And I am about to show you five impressive JavaScript projects for your programming resume. Now you might have been told that building impressive projects is all about building the most complex, like technically really complicated projects that would take like five years to build, but that does not have to be the case. In fact, if you make your projects too complicated, it can actually be a bad thing if the complexity is unnecessary. Because in fact, there are only three key features that a good programming project needs to have in order to show that you have strong programming skills that companies look for. And as someone who has walked this path and seen what works and what doesn't, I've curated these five projects in such a way that they have all of these core features without having to be super complicated and difficult. And by the way, I've left the best project for last, but don't skip to that part because you actually need to understand the first four projects in order to understand the last one. But before we get into the projects at all, we first need to understand a couple of things. First of which is why is building projects so important in the first place? The basic idea is that basically the number one problem and challenge we have as developers is that we have a lot of competition. There's a lot of other people who would like to have the same job that you're applying for. So then we need to compete and stand out amongst all of these people. So how do we do that? Well, we do that by showing to the companies that based on what they know about us, there's a higher probability that we have the skills that they look for over the other candidates that they get. That's really what this boils down to. And the way you do that is first of all, by actually being good at programming, which in fact, you get good at programming by building a ton of projects. So that's the first reason. And the second reason is that once you're good at programming, that's actually not enough to get hired because you still somehow need to prove to the companies that you are good at coding, which you do by building really impressive projects that showcase these skills. Now, again, before we get into the projects, let's go over the three key features that all of these projects need to have in order to be impressive on a resume. Before we get into that, if you are learning to code and you are serious about it, I actually have a full bank of free resources for you to download, which I've collated in different Notion templates. For example, I have a full online open source computer science degree template that gives you a full roadmap on how you can essentially study an entire computer science degrees worth of content online for completely free for projects. I have a full project tracker template that you can use for all of the projects that you end up building, for example, from this video, which you can get sent to your inbox right now. If you go down below in the description and enter your email and you also get access to my my free newsletter, which I send every week. And you can always unsubscribe at any time. But with that, let's get back into the video. So as much as I said that these projects don't need to be like hyper complex and like an unnecessarily technically difficult, they do still need to be somewhat complex so that they show that you have the skills to build something complex. But there's a sweet spot here. You just want to be able to show enough complexity without going too complex. Because if you go too complex and your project just becomes unnecessarily convoluted and like very very difficult to understand, then that is a big no-no. So the first key is that your projects need to showcase deep programming knowledge. And the second key, which might sound contradictory to the first one, is that you want to make your projects as simple as possible. But what I mean by simplicity, that it should be simple to use and simple to understand while seeming very complex to code. You want to be able to turn like complex code into something that looks very simple and is very simple to use, aka that has a very simple user experience. That's because good software is usually very simple to use. Like imagine if the iPhone was like super convoluted, or like super difficult to use, like Android phones, what? Then people wouldn't use it as much as they might be able to see like, oh yeah, there's some like complexity, like behind the scenes on how the iPhone was built. They're not going to care. They're just going to care about whether it's easy to use for them. Now finding this balance of like making something that seems to a technical person complex, like they realize, okay, there's a lot of different features that have been built into this but it's at the same time very simple in the front end side of things it can be difficult, but that is exactly why you have these videos and these projects that I'm about to show you. So you don't necessarily need to worry about this yourself. Now, the last key is that your project should be unique in some kind of way. So as much as I would love to just give you the code, I like literally give you, okay, just copy paste this exact project. I can't really do that. And I'd be doing a disservice to you if I did that, because really what companies look for is someone who can think like a 
problem solver who understands that the purpose of programming is to solve real problems and to build something new and innovative. You don't need to build something world changing or anything like that. If you can just show that whatever project you're building, even if you're picking a popular project archetype, like many of the ones we were talking about this video, add some sort of unique twist to it. Some unique thing that is like perhaps really important to you or that perhaps not everyone else who has built this project has thought about. That is going to be the kind of thing that is going to make your project stand out. So now once we get into the project, I want you to think about for all of these, what would be something that you could add to it that could make it different, that would make it your project. So the first project is gonna be some kind of an e-commerce website. Now I have one example right here, which is like a really old e-commerce project that I built like a really long time ago, uh, where basically you have this like catalog and you can shop different sections and then inside of the sections, there's different items and you can add them to cart and then you can go to checkout. Now you can see that the UI of this isn't like particularly amazing. But once you go here, you can like change the quantities, you can delete them. I haven't actually implemented the checkout here, but you might do that. There's also uh, authentication, so you can sign in or you can create an account or you can sign in via Google, so Google OAuth. So if you think about this project through the lens of these three keys, why is it a good project? Well, first of all, it is complex in the sense that there's a lot of different pieces that have needed to be put together to make something like this work. You have a UI, you have this cart feature, which is its own component. This is built in React, by the way. So React is a framework that is on top of JavaScript, which you really, really wanna learn if you're building any kind of JavaScript projects. And then what else do we have? Well, we have authentication. So we needed to figure out how to create users, how to use Google login, all these kind of things. And you can imagine there's gonna be some sort of a database behind the scenes where all these users go. So this is a good example of the complexity and simplicity balance. This UI, like when you're using this, is very simple to use, but in order to make it simple, there's a lot of complexity behind the scenes. Now, think about what could you add to this to make it slightly more unique, to make it a bit different. Maybe you wanna add like a chatbot or something like that, or like whatever you can think of. I actually made this project based on a React course at Zero to Mastery, which is this coding course platform that I've used a ton, that I'm also affiliated with. If you haven't learned React yet, I actually really recommend you go through that course because you're gonna build like pretty much exactly something like this while you go through it. So it's a really good way to learn and build at the same time. So I'll leave a link to that down below in the description. So this next one is some kind of a visualizer. Now I've got a couple of examples here. So I've built this sorting algorithm visualizer, where as you can see, so you can click on a name of a sorting algorithm. And based on that, it's going to sort all of these like things using that sorting algorithm. So why is this good? Well, it's reasonably complex because not only did you have to implement these different sorting algorithms, but you also had to figure out how to like connect that to the visual portion of this app. And it also showcases that you have like computer science knowledge, like you actually understand like different sorting algorithms. So this is good from that point of view. It's also good because it's very simple to use. It's very like anyone who lands on this page, like if they're a technical person and they understand sorting algorithms, like they'll immediately get it. Like, okay, yes, yeah, so you can click on this and it'll like sort them and stuff. In terms of how to make this unique, like this particular one isn't particularly unique uh, because there's a bunch of tutorials online of something very similar. But what you might be able to do is take this concept of visualizing computer science or visualizing some algorithms and applying that to some other type of algorithm, perhaps like graph searching algorithms or something like that. Or you might just take this concept of visualizing something and just visualize like whatever is important to you. For example, I've made this app a long time ago is a financial freedom visualizer. Where basically, you can insert a couple of these things like starting capital, monthly contributions, interest rates, like how many years we want to visualize this for, and like how much income I would need to retire, or like how much passive income I would need to fully retire. And then when you click on that, it'll show this visualization of like, okay, this is how much wealth I would need. That could then passively pay me this income. In this case, isn't even enough. But if we had like, I don't know, 5,000, then we can see that, okay, we will be financially free in 10 years with these parameters. Now, because for me, this whole financial freedom, financial independence is something I'm really interested in. Making a visualizer for this, like it really matches something that's important to me that can allow me to like tell stories about it when I'm talking about this in an interview of like how I had a problem of like visualizing this and then I just made code to solve it. That's the whole idea of this. This next one is a software management tool. So what I mean by this is let's say you have a coding project or especially if you're working a job for a bigger company, you'll have these software projects 
project management tools or like bug trackers where you're like tracking the different features you're building, tracking different bugs. Like for our startup, we just use Notion where you have this like drag and drop thing where you have like features and bugs and then you have different stages then you like move them around. I haven't actually built a custom one for this, but that would be a great, great project to build. Number one, because it's actually something that almost every software, like technical person who's interviewing you is immediately going to understand. They're immediately going to understand the problem that you're solving. And that's just making it so much easier for them to like get it and like see the use for what you've built. And there's gonna be a lot of complexity behind the scenes that you're gonna have to figure out. Like you. Might wanna do like drag and drop stuff. You might wanna like add other stuff, like you can assign priority to these tasks on like different categories. But it's a really, really great project to build if you can manage to do that. And then again, just add something to make it more unique. Like in this case, like even just the UI, like make your own UI that really works for you. That can be enough. Project number four is gonna be a social media visualizer. So right here, you can see a video of a very old social media visualizer that I built like back in the day. I did this when I was doing CS50 actually. So as you can see, this looks absolutely terrible. Don't like, copy this UI or anything like that. But the idea here is you wanna like build your own social media clone essentially. I mean, not an, again, not an exact clone of Twitter or Instagram that would be like very hard, but something that allows you to perhaps make some posts, sign in, log out, uh, follow people, edit posts, like posts, like these kind of things. Like a bunch of very like, Again, there's gonna be a lot of complexity behind the scenes. And as long as you make the UI understandable, it's gonna be simple to use. And again, social media, and like liking posts and things like this is gonna be something that a recruiter is instantly going to understand. You're not gonna to have to explain like what you're even trying to do here. This is gonna be very simple to make unique. Just like make your own social media, like whatever social media you wish existed, like make a very, very simple MVP version of it. And that can be very, very unique and interesting and also interesting to talk about in an interview. So for project number five, I'm actually not going to show you anything. This entire video, we've talked about how important it is that you make these projects yours. You make them unique in some kind of way. With this last one, I highly, highly encourage that you build a project like this, is that you just pick a problem in the world that you want to be solved with code and you just build a web application using JavaScript, using React that solves that problem. Maybe there's a platform that you wish existed for your industry. Maybe you want to build some productivity tool for yourself that you haven't found yet or even if you have found it but you want to build your own version of it that has some feature that some of the existing solutions don't have this is really what's going to make you stand out as a developer actually building a real piece of software what you want to do is think back to the reason why did you start learning to code in the first place for me i had so many of these moments like in my beginning stage of learning the code where i like saw like oh once i learn the code like i'll definitely build this like i want this thing to exist the thing is it kept me going in those beginning stages it kept me most Motivated. Sadly, I still haven't built a lot of the things that I sort of set out to build. I probably should, but I have built some of them. And let me tell you, like once you get to the stage where you can actually build this thing that you never thought you could ever build in your life and you're actually able to make it work even a little bit, it's the most amazing feeling in the world. Copying projects and getting inspiration from other people is like super fine that you should do that. But the best feeling as a programmer comes when you choose a project yourself, you choose something you want to exist and you just go and build it and you just don't stop until you manage to get it to work. Because when you do that, you're actually adding things to the world. Like you're actually using your coding skills to build something useful. And if you find this thing useful, there's a very good chance that other people might find that useful as well. And if that happens, you might be able to publish your application and make money with it. And now you might not even have to become a software developer for a company at all, because now you have a startup. Coding is a modern day superpower. So don't waste it. Use it to make the world a better place. So if you watch this video and you don't quite feel like you have what it takes to build really impressive projects like this yourself, then you should probably go watch this video before you start building these things. Because in that video, I go through the precise steps that I would do this year to learn to code from zero if I was starting over right now. Because after that, you can be 100% sure you have everything you need and build these impressive projects using JavaScript and get hired or perhaps build the next big startup. Good luck and I'll see you later.